Sidechain effects processing can be used to create useful and interesting effects, but it's often perceived as difficult to set up. Let's take a look at a couple of classic sidechain effects and see how easy they are to set up in Ableton Live. So sidechain processing uses the signal from one track to trigger or modulate an effect on another track. In this first example, on this synth pad track, I've got a sustained synth sound. Let's hear what that sounds like. Okay, and I'll flip quickly over to the MIDI editor on that clip so that you can see that I've got a whole note drawn in on this track. Here's the virtual instrument, and what I want to do is I want to add an effect after that that will actually cut off the sound. So I'm going to go up and grab a gate and drop that on the track after the pad. Now, what a gate normally does is attenuate signal that falls below a certain threshold. In this case, I'm actually going to use a signal from another track to set the level that I want to come through, and then when that other signal is not present, the gate will actually shut down and close off any sound coming through the track. So what I'm going to do is open up the sidechain button here so that I can see the sidechain parameters. I'll turn that on, and then I'm going to actually tell it to look over at a drum track that I've got on the first channel. So what I need to do is have a signal that's present on that channel that then can trigger over here. So I'm going to go on this first clip, and if I go over to the MIDI editor, I can see that there's currently no notes on that track. So I'm going to choose something like the kick or snare that's got a really nice attack so that I have a note that will then be sent through the side chain over to the synth pad track to trigger the gate. So I'm going to go into draw mode, which is command B, or you can click the little button up here, and that would be control B on a PC, and I'm going to click in every other note to start off with. Now what I want to have happen is every time this kick hits and it sends a signal through the side chain over to the synth pad track, the gate will open and let the synth sound through. But every time that the note is not present, every other 30 second note, that gate will swing shut and it should stop the sound coming out the synth pad track. So let's go back to this other clip and to device view. So I've got the side chain on, I've got it set to beat bugs and let's hear what it's going to do. So I'm going to trigger both clips here. So we can hear it pulsating in time with those kick hits. Now if you want, we don't actually need to hear the kick sound. I can actually disable that track. The signal is still going to go through the side chain and I'll still be able to hear this trigger that pulsating effect on the synth pad. So some things you might want to consider here in the gate plugin. You want to make sure your threshold is below the sound of the signal that's coming through. In this case, it's already set there. And then you can also use your attack, hold, and release times to determine how much of the sustain that you're getting on that synth pad track or how staccato that sound is. So first of all, I'd probably dial the attack time pretty fast because I want the gate to react as quickly as possible to that kick note that's coming through the side chain. So you can hear we're getting a much clearer attack now. The next thing I'll do is I'll go down to the hold parameter. Each time the kick note comes through, the gate swings open and the sound is allowed to come through. When the kick note stops, the gate is supposed to close, but the hold parameter will actually hold that open for a user amount of time. And in this case, we can use that to determine how much decay that we actually want to hear. So let me play the track and let's listen to what that sounds like. So you can hear that getting more staccato or more sustained or legato. In this case, just to review, the gate is used to open and let sound through each time a note comes through. Now, in another case, we may want to actually compress a sound or reduce the level of a sound each time a note comes through. So let's take a look at what's happening on this second clip and on this brass track. So in this case, I've got a brass sound, and let's hear what this clip sounds like. 
So we can hear that that's a sustaining sound. Now over on the kick track, I've got a kick that's hitting on the beat, one, two, three, and four, like a classic electronic kick. And what I want to have happen is I want the sound to dip each time the kick comes through so that we get that really strong pulsating kick that you expect to hear in electronic music. So what I've done here on the brass track is after the virtual instrument here, which I've got minimized, I'll minimize that again, I've got a compressor. And again, the compressor does have sidechain processing. So I'll click and I'll open that up. I'm going to enable the plug as well. I've got sidechain enabled, and I've got it set to accept signal coming in from the beatbugs track. So this is a little bit different. Each time the kick hits, it's now going to push down the volume on the brass track. Let's hear what that sounds like. So now you hear the sound kind of pulsating off the beat. And if I turn back on the kick, we can hear the kick come through nice and strong. And again, I'm going to use the attack time to set how quickly the compressor pushes down the sound and lets that kick come through. So in this case, I've got it dialed all the way down. And the release time I can use to set the sustain or how long that that kick is going to actually compress this other sound. So let's hear how that sounds. So you can hear that if I actually set that release time even longer, you start to get a very, very interesting effect. So sidechain processing can be used in so many ways that its only limitation is our own imagination. So experiment with the technique and have fun.